All right, in this problem, we're trying to find the area of the region bounded by two functions. Part of what we're gonna do is also sketch the graph of the, of the two curves. And we are going to shade in the region between the two curves. I'll start off with the easier one, which is y equals cosine x. And uh, I'll go from there. So cosine of zero is one. So, it's, so the, the intercept, the y-intercept will be one. And the, um, we see the maximum here is, is one, and the minimum is negative one. I did not make the distances on the x and y axis to scale. It's a little bit tricky to do that, but still doable, but I decided not to do that. All right, so that's y equals cosine x. Now, I'm going to get to this y equals two minus cosine x through by step, step by step. And so what I'm first going to do when I do uh, y equals two minus cosine x is I am going to um, first just sketch y equals negative cosine x. So this is not one of the final functions that I mean to graph. Uh oh, I was doing it wrong too. Okay. It's not one of the final functions I mean to graph. But when I multiply any function by a negative by negative one, the, re the result is that the graph is reflected about the x-axis. So we see that. Now, moving on to the next piece, I am going to sketch y equals negative cosine x, that graph, which I see at the right, upper right there, plus two. And what that does is it shifts the graph up by two. And keep in mind that the x-axis is the line y equals zero. Now, when I shift the line at y equals zero up by two, I'm gonna write a dotted line, which before would have corresponded to the x-axis, but I'm gonna write that as y equals two. And I'm gonna draw that dotted line and now sketch, really just copy and paste the, the y equals negative cosine x graph, but I moved it up by two. And uh, so that's why I have, instead of having x-axis, I have the dotted line y equals two. So if we have two where that dotted line is, then the, magnet, the amplitude is three, then down here is one, and then I'll go ahead actually and put in the x-axis. So I think many of you will say, okay, yeah, I don't really need to do all those little steps, but I did that to show what's going on there. And then what I'm gonna do is take both of these graphs and place them on top of each other and find and sketch the region in between those. So that is a, a lot being done there. And for many of you, you'll, you'll say, well, okay, that was sort of good, but I didn't need to do all that. Okay, so I mean, so that was a little bit overkill for many of you. You could just jump in and, and do that right away. I don't know what I'm getting, what's happening here. Okay. So, all right, so I'm gonna copy that one and. Can I copy this one on top? I think I can. Huh, that was sort of, was that what I wanted to do? That was, uh, no, no, I didn't do it right. Okay, hold on. I need to go down even further. It's like this. Okay, yeah, there we go. So, some reason it reminds me of the Rolling Stones and um, Mick Jagger, but um, okay, there we go. So you just, you know, here, here's those two graphs. All right, so here's two pi. I think I'll just leave it like that and sort of keep it a little bit, a little bit more minimal there. All right. Um, so far, so good. And then I can shade the region. And truthfully, it was, this whole problem was a lot about just doing that graph. It's the, the, the integration I think should be sort of simple, but also because the graph is, is sort of um, carefully sketched, I mean, sort of carefully sketched, we see what the points of intersection are. So the formula I use for area is that it's the integration of the function 
that's shown above. So area will be the integral from, you know, I'll have the function above minus the function below. And here A and B are determined by just by you know by, by the by the points of intersection here, and actually they tell us too, don't they? They say x is between uh, zero and two. So you take the top, the, the one that's on the top, and and you subtract the function that's on the bottom, and the function that's on the top apparently is y equals two minus cosine x, while the function on the bottom is y equals cosine x. And so, if you reverse the order, what's the result? The result will be. Um, that you'll get a negative number when you after you calculate the integral. And we don't want negative because we're finding area. So that would be something that would be a heads up to for me to, to look at every look everything over. And um, all right. So I have integral zero to two pi, two minus two cosine x dx. I'm gonna tell you already, I know something that's gonna happen. This Cosine x, when I integrate from zero to two pi, will have an integral of zero. I, I want you to show all your work, but it's it's just that I've you know seen these integrals before for cosine. And why do I know that integral is going to be zero? Why do I know this is y equals cosine x? I had it above it there also. Why do I know that the integral from zero to two pi cosine x is going to equal zero? Why do I know that before I even do any calculations. Can you tell me why? Come on, please jump in. What do you say? Why would, why would that integral of this cosine x equal zero? Do you know why? I think you do. Because it's an odd function? No, it's not an odd function. However, still the, the but I, you're on the right track is the idea is that the area that lies above the x-axis is the same as the area by, below the x-axis. And just through doing these problems a bunch of times, that, that's gonna be zero anyway. But let's not jump to conclusions or whatever. Let's go ahead and do the antiderivative. The antiderivative of two, well, see, then you go into this. If I know that this cosine x part is gonna be zero, how do I find the antiderivative, the integral of a constant? If you remember, to find the integral of a constant, you just take the constant and multiply by b minus a. So in this case, it's gonna be two times two pi minus zero. The answer is gonna be four pi. However, let's show all the work. The antiderivative cosine is sine. And then we'll, we'll actually see pretty quickly why we get this answer. So two times two pi minus two sine of two pi. Well, sine of two pi is equal to zero. Minus two times zero minus two sine of zero, sine of zero, zero. So, I, so all that part that I had to do with sine, you know, the, the integrals cosine x all disappeared and we get four pi. But okay, so this, this part here is an aside that this is equal to area above minus area below. When you take, when and if you take, multivariable calculus, you're gonna see there's a bunch of integrations and you do these little tricks here. And then another one is that the integral, another aside is if you just have the integral of two um, dx from zero to two pi, that's just gonna be two times two pi minus zero. That's how you integrate constants and you get four pi. But those are just the little side, side things and by the time I'm done with that, like I could have just, which I did, I just, just in a, you know, I just use the fundamental theorem of calculus, but we do have these little side things. And if, if you, if you're on a binge of integrating, which is pretty much what happens when you, in, in multivariable calculus, there's so much integration and, but they tend to be sort of easy integrations, like, like, like this one here, um, sort of little any easy integrals that you evaluate, but you're, you might just be cranking out homework and, you want to do these little shortcuts. Okay, but but anyway, that's 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 those aren't necessary. Sketching the graph and uh, you in, you integrate where you take the top function and subtract the bottom function.
Okay, so that's an even problem. It's a good one though. It's hard to get everything in an all one screen. Uh, maybe I'll, where should I end up? I don't know, I'll just end it here. Okay.